Hey you guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mink and of course this is Mink's Kinks. And y'all see by the setup, we are doing part two of my book tour. So if you haven't seen part one, definitely go ahead. I'll link it up above so that y'all can go see it because y'all know I, <laughs> I have a lot of books. I have a lot of stuff, period. Y'all know I'm a product junkie, but the book's really been booking for me lately. Um, so I wanted to go ahead and share my book tour with you guys. So we're not going to do too long of an intro because I still have a ton of books to go through with you guys. So if you're new here, hey, my name is Mink. Definitely go ahead, hit the subscribe button. We absolutely would love to have you join the Kinky Crew fam. Y'all see I got on my cozy clothes today because it is cold, okay? There's no better time than now to curl up on the couch with a good book, watch the snow fall, watch the leaves fall, chill, watch all of that. So let's get into the books that I have here. All right, so I do want to let you guys know these aren't in any particular type of order. I literally just pulled the books up off my bookcase so that I can show you guys. So let's get into it. So the first book that I have here is called Elsie's Business by French Francis Washburn. This is what the cover looks like. Um, I got this for I took a Native American lit class. We never got around to reading the book. He the professor ended up taking it off the syllabus. So I'm excited to read this. Um, like I said, I really enjoy reading books from different cultures, perspectives, all of that. So I'm excited to get into this being that it's um, the main character is Native American and I'm um, see what they have to offer. Next, I have another textbooky type of book. This is called Black Power, The Politics of Liberation. Um, it's by Kwame Tor, oh, formerly known as Stokely Carmichael and Charles B. Hamilton. Again, this is a book I picked up for uh, African American lit, African American history class, child, I don't know. But um, I never did get around to reading it. Professors always want to put a million books on the syllabus but never get to them. So this is another book that I didn't get around to reading, but I'm excited to read this one. I, I love a good book about history too. Next, this one is called Tracks. This is from Louise Eldridge. Again, this is from my Native American Lit class, so excited to read this. And I do remember that this book was about Native lands. Um, it is like, I want to say... I want to say this is like a novelly type of book, but it does have to do a lot with Native lands, a lot of the culture, etc. This one is called Winter in the Blood by James Welsh. Again, this is from that Native American lit class. Next, y'all, y'all know I'm a women's studies major or was a women's studies major. This textbook is called Sex for Sale and it's about prostitution, pornography, and the sex industry. Listen, I think this is fascinating. We'll just leave it at that. Next, we have a book of essays from one of my absolute favorite authors, Audre Lorde. This book is called The Sister Outsider. It's um, essays and speeches by Audre Lorde. There's some interviews. I did read some excerpts out of this. Yeah, there's some highlights and hearts and stuff all over this book, but I never read it in its entirety and I love Audre Lorde, so... Next, we have another textbooky type of book. This one's called Storming Caesar's Palace, How Black Mothers Fought Their Own War on Poverty. Again, y'all know I'm a women's studies, was a women's studies major, so I love to learn, learn about women's history um, just so that we can correct things going into the future because everything's going haywire. Next, y'all, is a book that I stole from my mama. This is called The Lovely Bones. There is a movie on this one and I refuse to watch movies that I have the books for that's why I haven't watched The Hate You Give because I have the book child and I haven't read it yet so I'm excited to go ahead and read this book um I want to say my mom thought it started out pretty slow it is a very long book so um yeah I'm excited to go ahead and read this one and I'm even more excited to watch the movie Next, I have The Help, the book. Now, this one, I wanted the book because I watched the movie and I really enjoyed the movie. Um, I have thoughts on the movie, but I'm excited to read the book because I always hear that the book is a lot different than the movie. That's why it pays to read the book and watch the movie, y'all. I'm trying to tell y'all. So, I'm excited to read this book and then rewatch the movie. It's been some time since I've watched the movie, but of course, I know the plot and everything. So, I'm excited to actually read the book and see what the differences are there. Next, this book is called The Romantics. Pulled it in a little bit closer so that y'all can see this one. I want to say this one is about two girls in college and they become lesbians. I want to say that. It's 
been a long time since I bought this book so don't quote me but I'm excited to read this one because I remember when I was in the store and I picked it up and it sounded really good all right y'all the next book I have here is called calling me home by Julie Kibler I think is her name this is a book that I stole from my mom shout out to my mama um I think that she said she read this one and she really enjoyed it that's why I have it probably child I don't know but this is in a stash next is another book that I have from college this is called waiting till the midnight hour the narrative history of black power in America by Paniel E. Joseph next y'all is a book that I absolutely used to love this is um tears for water by Alicia Keys it's a songbook of poems and lyrics and y'all I told you guys in part one of my book tour that when I was in high school teenager-esque I guess I was very very heavily interested in poetry and baby girl loved Alicia Keys so I had to pick this up and I remember this is a book that I really really loved um there's some hearts on poems and stuff in here too so I'm excited to read this again and um see what she's talking about this one is another book that I have here. This is called For Everyone by Jason Reynolds. It says a poem, a nod, a nothing to lose. And then on the back, it says really cute. This is for the courageous and everyone who wants to be. So this is a book of poems, but I think it's more inspirational. Again, I've never read this one, so I'm excited to read it. I love that it's a hardback. I love the simple cover and everything. And I love that it's pushing us to be better, okay? Next is another book that I have. This one's count called Counting Descent by Clint Smith. This is another book of poems. I do remember reading this one, and this was really, really good. And I'm excited to read it again. It's a very thin book of poems, but I'm excited to read this. Listen, next is one of my favorite books that I've read from college. This is called Freshwater by Aquike. I want to say, say is how you say her name or their name. I'm sorry. Amezi. This is the author of You Made a Fool Out of Death or Death Made a Fool Out of Me. Chow, it's something like that. They recently came out with another book and it's doing very well. So happy for them. Um, and I mean, I, this was a very, very good book. I read this um, for a college lit class. However, I think it moved too quickly in the college lit class. This is a very complicated um, novel. So I'm excited to read this again on my own time. Another one I have here is called In the Dream House by Carmen Mario Mercado. And this was a very, very, very good book. It's about a toxic relationship, love story-esque type of situation. It's written in small snippets like this. Um, sometimes it goes on for pages, sometimes it doesn't. So I'm excited to read this one again. Um, again, I feel like college classes is college classes sometimes just move a little too fast. So you're not able to actually retain the information. Um, but you know, they don't want to hear that, but this was a great book. The professor who taught this class, um, literally has given me some of the best book recommendations ever. Okay. The next book that I have here is called the book of joy. Um, His Holiness the Dalai Lama and then Archbishop Desmond Tutu. So that's what this one looks like. And if I'm being honest y'all, this book was given to my graduating high school class and I never got around to reading it. It just says lasting happiness in a changing world. And it's honestly probably a great book to read right now when there's so much going on, there's so much hate, there's so much violence. It's probably a great book to read to sort of become one with yourself if you child if you pick up what I'm putting down um so I probably should get to this book soon next I have a book called Sweetly by Jackson Pierce I don't remember what this one's about but the cover is super super cute and it gives me spooky next is yet another book I stole from my mama this is called The Wedding by Dorothy West again don't know what this one is about but the cover art Next, yet another one I stole from my mom. This one's called Better Than I Know Myself by Virginia Deberry and Donna Grant. Next is another one from my Native American lit class and this one is called Itch Like Crazy by Wendy Rose. And this one is a poetry book but it's more historical I guess. 
This one is called Looking for Alaska by John Green. I picked this up a long, 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 long time ago after reading The Fault in Our Stars. I wanted everything from John Green and I never did get around to Looking for Alaska, but I always did hear, hear that it was really good. So if you read this one, comment it down below. Next y'all, this book is called Dirty Rush by Taylor Bell. And honestly, every time I pick this book up, I want to read it. So it says big and bold on the back. Taylor Bell's shameless expose of Greek life goes all the way and then some. Then it says hashtag sex, hashtag scandal, hashtag sisterhood. And this book was on clearance for $2 and it just sounded too good to leave there. Next y'all. So this book is called Diversity in Disney Films, Critical Essays on Race, Ethnicity, Gender, Sexuality, and Disability. And I took, well child y'all know I'm a very active person so I was a mentor for a freshman class and I sat in a class with them I didn't have to do any of the work but I was gifted all the books so this one is about diversity in Disney films and I wanted to keep this so that I can go through and read the essays and then watch the movie um that sounds so rewarding to do during the winter time with my Disney plus subscription you hear me so um maybe that's something I'll do this upcoming winter season when it's too cold to go outside and do stuff but I still want to be um reading and stimulate my mind and watching Disney princess movies too because there's a lot of um there's a lot of issues with Disney films piggybacking right off of that one is the second book from that class and this is the handsome heroes and vile villains men in Disney's feature animation that's what the cover looks like and again it just really focuses on some of the issues with Disney's male characters and protagonists Next is a book called Don't Call Us Dead by Dana Smith. And again, this one is a book of poems. However, this one is focusing on sexuality. I know that the author was or, or is gay. And I'm pretty sure this is like his coming out story, except in poem version. Next is a book that was gifted to me from one of my professors from college. Um, this is The Blues Legacy and Black Feminism by Angela Davis. I'm a stand for Miss Angela Davis, okay? And this book just goes through the musical legacy of black women in the entertainment industry. And I am too, too excited to read it. So that is what the cover art looks like. And just from the sentence it says on the back, it says crucial black women blues singers through a feminist lens. Um, Davis provides a historical, social, and political context or context to these women's stories. So if you've ever seen um, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom when it was on Netflix, I think it still is on Netflix. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. But um, the story of Ma Rainey is in this book as well. Next y'all is another textbook I have from um, my women's studies classes. This book is called Non-Binary. Non non it's the memoirs of gender and identity. So these are a series of essays um, about non-binary people and how they got to where they were, their stories, um, and all of that, all of that. Next is another book from, I had from an African-American protest class. This is called A Girl Stands at the Door, the generation of young women who um, desegregated America's schools. Say no more. This is what the cover looks like. Next, we have a big, beautiful pink book. It's called The Source of Self-Regard. It's selected essays, speeches, and meditations by none other than the late and great Toni Morrison. And here is Miss Morrison on the back. Next is a book called Today Will Be Different by Maria Simple. I think is how you say her last name. Next, we have another big book. This is called The Last Boy and Girl in the World. Um, it's a love story, y'all know. <laughs> I'm a sucker for a love story, okay? Next, I have a book here called Skin, and this is by Adrian Maria Verretos. All right, y'all, we are coming down to the end of the books. So the first book I have here is called To Redeem the Soul of America, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference and Martin Luther King. Um, I don't know where I got this book from because I don't believe I had to read this book for class. But like I said, I love a good old history book and this will take me the rest of my life to finish. 
Next, we have another big book. This one's called Defying Dixie, The Radical Roots of the Civil Rights Movement from the years 1919 to 1950. Next, we have a book called God's Roadmap for Life by David Borden and Tom Winters. Next is another one I stole from my mama. This is Beaches 2. Um, my mom loves beaches. It's not a past tense. It's very, it's very active and very present. My mom loves beaches. Um, I stole her beaches books so that I could read them eventually because I grew up watching the movies and I just feel like it would be against my upbringing to not read the books. Next is a book that my mom talked about forever. This one is called I Know This Much To Be True by Wally Lamb. very very excited to read this but this is a hefty book 900 pages baby girl next this is another book that was gifted to me from a from a professor this is called the reluctant spy my secret life in the cia's world war on terror by john last name i'm not even gonna try this one is called brokers of deceit how the u.s has undermined peace in the middle east Next, we have a book called Dope Sick. This was a very, very interesting book. I didn't finish it. We only read excerpts in class, but it's about dealers, doctors, and the drug company that addicted America. This one is called You Can and You Will by Joel Osteen. This one, as y'all can see, I've read, obviously. This is the Stonewall Reader, and this is about the historical legacy of Stonewall. If you don't know what Stonewall is, child, just go Google it. This is The History of Sexuality by Michael Foucault. This is not a beginner friendly book. This book is very complicated, very difficult. Um, this was one of my highest classes for women's studies and child, I still don't, I, I still couldn't really tell you what this book is about. That's why I need to go back in and read it on my own time to know exactly what Michael Foucault, one of the founders of um, feminism, I guess is what we'll call that. Um, child, I need to reread. Next, I have a book on lynchings. Again, I took a lot of um, African-American lit classes, African-American protests, African-American history, all types of stuff like that. So um, Ida B. Wells historical on lynchings is very, very important. Next, I have Fifty Shades Freed. This is the third one from, isn't it? Yeah, this is the third one from Fifty Shades of Grey. I need to go back and read the first two. This is called Necessary Noise. And then the last book I have in my collection is called The Husband's Secret. And baby, this book sounds crazy. All right, you guys. So those are all the books that I have in my collection. So I appreciate you guys so, so much for watching this video, making it to the end. If you guys have any books that you want to hear my thoughts and opinions on, definitely comment it down below. Um, I do a lot of book reviews over on TikTok. So I'll post my TikTok over on this side here. But I do also include a lot of my thoughts and a lot of my vlogs and stuff. You know, TikTok's got to be quick and everything. So I usually make my TikToks pretty quick. But um, if you want to hear in depth, definitely tune into my vlogs i've it, child, i've been finishing books like nothing so yeah y'all that is the end of today's video like i said comment down below if you want to hear my thoughts on any of these books as well as please tell me if you read any of these books as well so i hope that you guys have enjoyed my book collection and i will see you guys in my next one bye